Welcome back everyone to see the stories and we're still uh, with Nathan Rusli. Um, he actually wrote this book, Aww. which is very mesmerizing. You have to see all yeah, the pictures. Snakes inside. of so Java. Amazing. All the pictures in this book. Yeah. It's just so amazing. Um, and also a lot of information. This should be put in the curriculum. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Okay, so when did you start re uh, writing this book and how long did it take you? Um, I think this one was in 2000. 20, I think I got. Mm. I was in lockdown. I got yeah. bored. You got bored. I got bored, and I, I just thought we have a lot of snakes. We have a, a few field guides. Yeah. A lot of them are really difficult to use. Not enough pictures, and the pictures don't really tell a story. And mm. I, I just wanted to make it easier for people to identify snakes and all these complicated words. You know, mm. uh, I wanted to try and simplify that. Uh, for uh, young students and herpetologists mm. to learn mm. um, how to identify snake species. So I thought it'd be a fun idea to make a book. And I, I had a lot of pictures already lying around because by then I'd, be doing, I'd been doing, you know, snake research for quite a while. Mm. So I had the pictures already. Mm. I kind of was familiar with the mm. snakes. And yeah. yeah, you said there's yeah. 89 species of snakes. Mm -hmm. Wow, okay. So, uh, uh, Nathan, uh, uh, you put a lot pictures. of amazing pictures inside yeah. um, with uh, all those details, details. and stuff. Uh, is there any, any certain, um, how do you say, Technique. protocol, uh, if I might say, of taking pictures of snake uh, just yeah. to be safe, let's say? Yeah, uh, and uh, can I invite a, a friend? Oh, sure. I think, of yeah. course. Sure. I'd like to invite my colleague, uh, Risma. Oh, Risma, come, come on, on, come on. Come on in. So, um, Risma is my okay. colleague at the lab. Mm. She's the amphibian technician, so she's the one that takes care of the frogs. Oh. Right. But she's also really good with snakes, and I will need her help with this oh, one. Oh, uh, Risma, should, okay. Should I say the princess and the frogs? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> we shouldn't. <laughs> okay, Risma. Right, so we're going to mm. demonstrate how we're catching a venomous snake. Don't oh, worry, we brought okay, a venomous okay. snake Okay, okay, very important. With us. Let's see. Uh, but uh, we have here a snake that's pretty angry, not used to people. Angry! And will behave somewhat like a venomous snake. It's totally harmless oh though. Oh my god, can um, I take a video of this? Yeah, you can, you can if you want to. I'm curious. Hmm. So this is, this old thing I only saw on the documentaries yeah. in National Geographic. Yeah. And now I can see it firsthand. So these, these are found mainly where? Well, um, this is, is native to Java, uh -huh. so this is the uh, radiated rat snake. Oh, radiated, radiated red. rat snake. Yep. Rat snake. Okay. Oh. <clears throat> okay. Okay. For, for a quick second, mm. I thought that was actually a golf club. Yeah, ah. it is a golf club. It is? Modified. Oh. Modified. So, uh, and we call this a snake hook. I was not entirely wrong. Okay. You and not. basically the main it's principle hooked. with venomous snakes is you want to um, minimize contact with your hands. Ah. You don't want your hands close to their fangs. Right. So you know a lot of people on TV will True. do that and hold. True. And that is a very dangerous thing to do. Oh. <laughs> you know, because the snake is angry yep. and you've got your fingers really close to the venomous the fangs. fangs. And so if we would like to catch a venomous snake, mm. what we do is we... Uh, use a hook very calmly to get the snake out. So snakes, you ah. see, they always try and get away, right? Yeah, of course. And, and if you... Uh, okay, don't camera person, annoy don't him, worry. He's going to be fine. But once you make him feel threatened and yeah. cornered... Oh, wow. He's just going to keep running. Yeah. And, yeah. So we can tail the snake mm -hmm. like this. And we can... Hold it with your hook. Patient. Okay. You get the head in, like that. Ah. And we have one. And person. then you, oh, you twist it. Yeah. yeah. So oh, you have to, you have to have that kind of ah. sort of like uh, fabric thing. Yes. Wow. Now, when we want to tie the bag, we've uh -huh. got to have a hook there, and we've got to step on it so the snake doesn't go and bite our fingers right. while we're tying the bag. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay, so we've got to make sure that... The tire's tight. Yeah. Okay, and let's 
do that. There we go. So if you don't have any of the, the hook thing in your house, mm -hmm. what other thing can you actually use? Well, you could use a broom, you could use a stick, a anything. Oh. Anything. Golf stick would do, yes, right? Yes, and, and... So as an extension for the hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Oh. So as long as you don't touch it. Right. And you see with these snake bags, um, I have stitched corners here. Yes. Yeah. So that we can hold the end. Without them, without, without him yes. biting it. Uh, the snake uh, biting it. Hmm. So, so <coughs> for, for certain, you should have um, like dedicated instruments yes. to actually yeah. do So, actually, to keep thing. it inside that fabric material is fine. It's fine, but oh. if it's venomous, it can pierce through. Right. And therefore, we need a box. We need a box. If you want to catch a venomous yeah. snake, you put it in a cloth bag yeah. so it can breathe. Mm. And then you put it in a box. Even the, the box has the holes the in box. it. Yes, the yes. box does have holes in it. Yeah. Um, and now we'll show you how we can get close-up pictures of, of venomous oh, snakes. Oh yes, please. Oh. Right, so... Wow. Um, we take... The hook. Okay. Alright. Assuming this is venomous, it's not. Mm -hmm. We'll use a hook instead of our hands to... Yes. Remove it from the box. And we're gonna basically do what we did the first time, just uh, in reverse, mm. right? Mm. So you hold it with your with your stick so that it doesn't and bite then you. We open the knot. Uh huh. And now, since I've got um, the stitch corners, I can immediately grab the end of this to let it out and let it out. Mm. Okay. Now, once I've done that, I've got my hook and I've got this instrument, it's called a snake tube. Oh, oh there is such a snake tube. Yes, it's an acrylic acrylic tube uh -huh. that I'll put in front of the snake's face. Oh. And once it goes in, hop, oh, I can grab it like that. That's how you take a picture. Oh, and take a picture. Uh, can I take a picture? Yes, yeah. let's use my phone. Okay. 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 And, and take a picture. You want to do a wifi with him or something? Ah, that's pretty clear, yeah. Uh, and and if you want the, a really clear shot of the head... Let it out. Let, well, let the head out. There is an and you're still holding this. Yeah. And this is much safer mm. than doing that. Right, and the reason I need to do this mm. is because a lot of snakes, we um, the difference between species mm. lies, say, on the scales mm. in the head. So can, um, sorry, can you use the flashlight? Does it scare? Yes, no, it's fine. It's uh, fine. fine. Snakes, mm. a flash is fine. It Ooh. does excrete something. Yes, it did excrete <laughs> What is something. that? And that's a, well, it's feces in urine. It's feces. Ah, okay, right. so, I think it feels home. It feels yeah, like it, at it home. Is not, um, <laughs> it is not happy. It, it uh, is not happy. Oh, it is not sorry. Happy. I mean, would you be happy if someone put your head in a... No, of course yeah. not. Yeah. Of course not. But it is okay. better than, um, you know, holding it behind the head. Uh -huh. yeah. mm -hmm. And I, to release it, I just go... Whoop. And there we go. Slithery snakey. So, oh. um, okay, a question. Mm -hmm. Is it safe to uh, have snakes as pets? Well, because that depends. We, we know a lot of people are actually yeah. uh, collecting uh, uh, exotic animals yeah, like, like uh, amphibians and also snakes. Mm. And when it comes to that, also we have to think about the, uh, uh, you know, the... The safety. The safety. Yeah. Well, to keep something uh, venomous, mm. if it's a venomous snake, you'd want to have um, an escape-proof enclosure ah. to make sure it doesn't escape. You've got to have a lock on it uh -huh. to prevent um, children or to prevent under, other people from accidentally mm. opening it. Mm. You also want it ideally in a room where if it does somehow escape from the cage, it's not going to go out and endanger the public. Is it safe enough to keep it in, in your room? I wouldn't. You wouldn't, uh -huh. okay. But because there are no laws regarding this in Indonesia, mm. it's up to people it's how to they people. would. Okay. Okay, these it's days, it's... Nathan, uh, we heard a lot of news and uh, stories about how uh, a lot of pythons are actually on found the city. Um, around the Somewhere. ceiling of houses, yeah. um, in, in the neighborhood uh, yep. river, let's say. Especially or... in the rainy season, right? Yeah, especially mm. in rainy season. Mm. What would you think that be? 
Well, uh, let's introduce you to my friend Umar. L oh, oh, you have a Python ready or so? <laughs> yes, we have oh a Python. God. What's his name again? Umar? Yeah, this is Umar. Umar, okay. Uh, now, Umar is a reticulated python, the longest snake in the world. And these are quite common in Jakarta yeah. um, because they live in uh, the sewer systems. And they don't have a lot of uh, predators and yeah. therefore they... Um, they like it there because no competition. Yeah, and they, they, there's no competition and therefore mm. there are a lot of these in, in the city more oh, than so that's why they, they're they being found a lot, a lot in, the city. in the city yeah exactly. yes. oh, oh my god it's so beautiful can we, can we take a closer look yeah. from that okay. look at how big is it it is so big so Uma yeah. how big is Uma um, is Uma is a, was an abandoned pet so his owner could not oh. take care of him anymore didn't okay. want him anymore and so now I have him so how, how old is he um, or I she? think he's about Four or five Four years, years old. Yes. Mm. And how, how, how much does he weigh? Uh, when did we last weigh him? Probably about 10 kilos. Mm. Mm. Yeah, around that. And you feed him with what? Um, chickens, uh, chickens. Rabbits. Rabbits. Mm. And guinea pigs, maybe rats oh my God. sometimes. Can, 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 can he recognize you um, as the owner? As the owner? I'm not quite sure. Mm. We, we don't know that uh -huh. uh, for sure. But uh, reptiles are more intelligent than we give them credit for. Mm. Oh. So, oh, oh let me just go in. There you go. Okay. You wanna hold it? You oh, wanna sure, sure. It? There we go. Just stroke him gently. There we go. Okay. Mm. I, I'm just gonna be... Uh, feel I'm, the muscle. Yeah. Yes. I'm gonna take a picture of you, Hans. <laughs> okay. I don't know which gym that Uma goes to. <laughs> But Pose. this is like very muscular. Muscular. So, uh, in terms of that, uh, when it comes to pythons, um, what are the right treatment or mm. uh, the way of, 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 I don't know how to use it, to control it uh, if there is one uh, found in your house? Okay, well, what I suggest is to call the fire service. Mm -hmm. and I think the fire service in Jakarta is mm. probably they're quite skilled in, in uh, Handling dealing with snack. pythons. Let's put mm. him back in the box. Yes. Okay. Um, so thank you, Uma. <clears throat> what what happens if somebody got tangled? By... Oh, well, you could die. You could so die. You, I mean, that's why we never have <laughs> a python matter. around your neck. You shouldn't uh, have. You yes, shouldn't have. Exactly. Okay. So, no taking picture of python around your neck. Yes, yes that's not, that's very it's very dangerous. Although necklace. they're tame, you know, you never know when they'll. Um, try and um, strangle, strangle you. you. They have the ability to do so that um, just because they normally don't mm. doesn't mean they can't. Okay. They still have a lot of sharp teeth, they still have a lot of muscle. Mm. Mm. So I wouldn't suggest ever putting a python around yeah. them. Oh. Wow, because we saw people um, you know, posing with a, a yes. python on their necks, yeah. like a shawl or yes, something. Yes, that right? is unfortunately still common. Mm. Yes. And accidents rarely happen because mm. the um, snakes that are used to people, they generally don't tend to do so. Mm. But they can. They you can. know, if for example a rabbit jumped past mm -hmm. and it initiates a feeding response. Yeah. Right. And you're having the snake around your neck and it's hungry and it's just going to go... Oh, oh God. Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh. So it doesn't have to be you necessarily, it mm. could be something that's happening in your you. surrounding. Yeah. Right, Risma, thank you so much. Thank you. You can uh, go back to your station, oh. and um, that was actually quite interesting yeah. so, when it comes to uh, reptiles. But, uh, Nathan, uh, we want to know about you personally now. Mm. How did you become interested in uh, what you call it? Hepatofauna? Is that right? Okay, so how did you uh, how did you become so attractive to it, and also um, why you enjoy working in this field? Well, I mean, um, I've always liked animals, and I think uh, the snakes. It's in my teens. My parents were really afraid of snakes, and they, they told me, <laughs> "Okay, fine, you can play with animals, just." no snakes and, mm. and so naturally as a rebellious teenager <laughs> you got so curious I, about I got it. even more curious yeah. with snakes and, and I that's how I ended up um, yeah being a herpetologist mm. with a specialty in snakes mm. but over the past few years I've um, been working more with turtles and mm. amphibians so my main job is uh, at the conservation breeding lab and we focus on um, bleeding toads so mm. oh uh, yeah <coughs> on, on yeah amphibians mm. 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 and so there's this uh, toad 
it's um, endemic to uh, Java. Mm -hmm. It's only found on several mountain ranges yep. in Java, and it's critically endangered due to uh, habitat loss. And um, we still have a lack of information on how to breed these animals. So mm. we don't really know uh, about their reproduction. And mm. what we're trying to do in the lab is to set up an assurance population. Mm. So in case they get wiped out in the wild mm. yes. because of pollution, because of climate change, you know, at least we still have a, uh, we have some in captivity yeah, yeah, that we yeah. can hopefully reintroduce. Mm. Um, mm. Yeah. I guess we have um, some footage about um, uh, the blood toads. Do we have it? Do we have it? Let's, let's um, see it. The plasma, the blood toad. This is Nathan's specialty as well, yes. right? And also, I, I don't know we, um, because we were informed that uh, yeah. we do have it. Maybe while well, that one. that it is. Yeah. Yes, that's the. So bleeding. that's a blood toad. Yeah, it's a blood toad. It's a the bleeding toad. It's oh it's the bleeding toad. I'm bleeding. sorry for that. Yes, and so it's um, it's a very small toad. So it's about this size. So here we have two different species of um, toads. This is the common. This is a oh, more common there species. It is. Oh, that's very yes. small. So small. yes, so, so they don't get very big. Okay, yeah. how, how small? It's the size of a cockroach outside. Uh, there, there you go. So Can you, you see, see that? Or like a yeah, actually, small gecko, almost like a small gecko. Yeah, no, yeah. It's, it's very shy. It's so very this shy. is uh, the hourglass toad. Oh, this a, is the hourglass. It's a relative of the bleeding toad. The relative uh -huh. of it. Yes, mm. but this is uh, it's not endangered, and mm. there's quite a lot of them. Mm. And because we know nothing about their husbandry, about their captive care, mm -hmm. uh, that's why we are now trying with the hourglass toad first. Yeah, before you go to the Yes, exactly. Because if we lose, um, you know, accidentally kill a critically endangered species, that's a huge loss for conservation. True. Right, right. And also it is the only protected species of amphibian in Indonesia. Oh. So we've got to be really, really careful, careful. for uh, legal reasons as well. I see. And so right now we're working mainly with the hourglass toad. We're trying to figure out how we can breed them, uh, how we can maintain them in captivity well. Mm -hmm. And also we have here the chiramai uh, bleeding toad. Mm -hmm. So this oh chiramai bleeding toad yes. is it different from yes that exactly. Toad? So this is a, a an endangered species. It's not critically endangered. It's not as endangered as the uh, bleeding, bleeding toad. toad. And this is a newly described species actually in 2019. Oh, that's pretty It was new. discovered in Mount Chiramai. Uh -huh. But it oh. turns out they are more widely distributed and they're not as endangered as the mm. bleeding toad. Wow. So, from all the things that you've mm. shared with us, uh, Nathan, uh, a lot of uh, amphibians and reptiles seems to be endangered. Yeah. Yes. And how can we, as the communities, help uh, to actually okay. preserve them well. Although, um, you know, there might be a lot of people who are actually afraid of snakes and amphibians uh, per se. So how can you tell us to actually contribute our part to actually uh, preserve them? Well, I mean, one simple thing you could do at home mm. is, is to uh, create a, a nice environment for wildlife to thrive, say, in your garden. Mm. So, say we want to make a home for this guy, our mm. friend the toad, we can um, have a little pond, right? Mm -hmm. And so he can breed in the pond. Mm -hmm. um, and his tadpoles, they're gonna get rid of the mosquitoes, larvae. Right. Oh. And so. Yeah, that, that actually can, can uh, avoid you from dengue fever. That's yes. right. So, these, uh, these are quite common around Jakarta, and mm -hmm. these are one of the most common. Uh, amphibians that we find uh, near our homes, mm. and then you also have. Um, Oops. Oops. No, 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 oh. no, 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 no. The top oh. gecko and oh, the, gecko, gecko, uh, house geckos. Yes. So those are actually helpful for us. I mean, they are pest control free the pest control yeah. agents, right? I see. So wow. just let them be. But let yeah. them be. Let and, them be. and even with snakes, because where I live, we get a lot of green vipers, sometimes mm. spitting cobras and crates. Mm -hmm. And I'd be sitting having my coffee and a spitting cobra would go <laughs> moving past and I'd just sit and watch it. And wow. you know, as long as it doesn't feel provoked, it's yeah. not gonna go threatening. Uh, and um, right. I've been living, yeah, uh, side by side with venomous snakes mm. for mm. about four to five years, mm. you know, with venomous snakes All living around wild around, around, you. around me. Wow. Uh, I've had one actually, on my shoe rack, 
You didn't realize it was there? No, no, I realized it was there. Oh, okay. I just left it there. <laughs> you just left. Oh, and it was right. there for about four days, five ah. days. I told my colleagues, though, that were often would often come to uh -huh. my house, mm. hey, we've got a viper in that shoe rack, mm. don't touch it. Oh, All right. right. <laughs> It was there for four days. <laughs> oh, so wow. basically, when it comes to amphibians and reptiles, if you're not sure that uh, how to handle it, mm. you can actually call the firefighters. That's right. Or just one, mm -hmm. and also leave them unprovoked, and also uh, don't create kill them. a good environment. For and them. don't kill them. Don't kill them. Please no. do not kill them. And that uh, came from Nathan Rusli as herpetologist. Mm. Nathan, thank you so much. Thank you. For and thank you for bringing all these over here. Yeah. So that we have a better understanding of them. Yes, and also don't forget the oh, book. Oh yeah, you can you can find it on on, on some some marketplace. Yes, um, and also you right. can uh, learn better about Snakes it. Snakes of Java. Thank you. So much. Thank you. Thank you. Hope, Thank you. Um, you can continue your work. Uh, yeah, and stay safe, help us please. <laughs> stay better safe. Better about the uh, amphibians uh, and also wildlives uh, and the yeah, reptiles. Yeah, wildlife and yeah. snakes. So see the stories will continue after the break. Stay tuned, right? You'd please do not go anywhere.